So in today's video, we're going to look at the common shots that crop up when you find yourself the wrong side of the blue like this. So in a previous video that I made, which I'll leave in the description below, I looked at the common shots that crop up when you find yourself with quite a bit of angle on the blue, when you're quite low on the blue and you need to go in and out of bulk and back down for reds. In this video, we're going to look at the common shots that crop up when you find yourself a little bit straighter on the blue. Now, the exact angle that you find yourself on the blue then determines the shot that you can play in order to get the white in and out of bulk and back down onto the reds. So when the professionals are playing these shots, they're not just potting the blue with lots of topspin and hoping that they go in and out of bulk. They will be specifically picking where they're hitting on the cushions and whether they're coming round all of the bulk colours or whether they're coming back in between the yellow and brown or whether they're coming off the two cushions and back in between the green and brown. So we're going to explore the different positions that you find yourself in and how to play all of these common shots. Right, so on this first shot, I found myself quite straight on the blue here and I want to pop the blue and then get onto these two reds here, are the reds that I would like to play on. Now, it is possible that I can pop this blue and just roll the white forward slightly over to where I'm pointing now to leave a medium range shot on one of these two reds. But if I was to play the blue and go in and out of bulk, I can just get the white a little bit closer to these two reds and it'll make the pot on those reds much easier then. So the exact angles of these shots when you find yourself on the blue, you'll have to play around with exactly where the white is. As I always say on these videos, mark a little position on the table so that you can keep putting the white ball back in exactly the same place each time and then play some of these shots with topspin and have a play around with where the white goes and whether or not the white is missing the bulk colours. So on this first shot, it looks as though I can play lots of topspin and right hand side to go off these two cushions, off the bulk cushion, off this third cushion here and then back down into the middle of the table here for these two reds. Now, what the right hand side does here is it's just gonna help the white flick off these off the two cushions, off the side cushion and off the bulk cushion, and then just speed the white up a bit and help it get back down into open play. If I was to only play this shot with topspin, I would get round the back of the bulk colours, but the white just wouldn't have that extra bit of speed on it. Right, so on this first shot then, I'm looking to pop the blue with lots of top and right hand side, and I'm going to go off that side cushion, off the top cushion, off this side cushion, and then back down into the middle of the table for hopefully a nice shot on one of these two reds. So lots of top and right hand side. And there you can see I've managed to bring the white round the table there and got the white a lot closer to these two reds so that I've got a nice easy shot on my next red. And as I say, on that shot, I knew that if I played with top and right hand side from that position, I would get the white off the side cushion, the bulk cushion and this side cushion without hitting any of the bulk colours. Right now for this second shot, I've positioned the white a little bit further down the table now towards the black cushion. So with the white being a little bit further down now, the white is going to take a different path off the blue. And again, just to highlight, this is the importance of making a mark on the table so that you can play the same shot from the same position and do your practice consistently each time. So this time it looks like if I was to pop the blue now from this position and I play top and the right hand side to help the white spin and run around the table with a bit of extra pace, I will come off this side cushion, off the bulk cushion and somewhere in between the green and brown. Then if I come off this cushion that I'm standing by here, then hopefully I'll come down and somewhere into the, this part of the table here for a shot on these two reds that are above the black this time. So if I have a look at this one, this again is top right hand side and just trying to judge the pace on the shot. And you can see that time that I recognise that I got the angle to go off the two cushions in between the green and brown and then we came off this last cushion nicely where we thought and we've got a lovely shot now on that red just by the black and hopefully we can carry on our break. Now one more thing worth mentioning on this video is that we're trying to generate a lot of cue speed and get a lot of movement out of the white ball on these shots. So just like I've talked about in previous videos, 
The way we're going to do that is by using a nice long final backswing. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to smoothly and gradually build the speed up of the cue. So you can see here with my action that I've pulled the cue all the way back to the V on my bridge hand. And then I can smoothly and slowly start the delivery and then push all the way through the white trying to keep my head as still as possible. Right, so we've looked at those previous two shots then and we've seen potting the blue and going round the back of all of the bulk colours and we've also looked at coming in between the green and brown and off this side cushion and back into open play. Now, the third shot we can look at is coming off the side cushion, off the bulk cushion and in between the yellow and brown. Now, I would say this shot now becomes a little bit more dangerous because if we come in between the yellow and brown, we're coming very close to going in off in this middle bag here. So, in order to get the white in between the yellow and brown, we're now getting the white ball off this side cushion very close to this corner pocket here and then off the bulk cushion and then in between yellow and brown, but we've got the danger of this middle pocket. And you can actually see exactly like we thought, we came off that side cushion there, off the bulk cushion, in between the yellow and brown, but the white is dangerously close to this middle pocket. So you might not always go in off exactly like I have done there, but it's a very dangerous route because you're always going to get close to this pocket. So hopefully now you can see the importance of starting to recognise these angles on the blue and to start learning exactly where the white ball is going and the exact path that it will take in and out of bulk. So I think it's very common on these shots for players to think that the professionals are just playing these shots with lots of topspin and lots of side and they're going somewhere in and out of bulk and back down for reds at the bottom of the table. But actually they're picking very specifically where they go, whether it be all the way around the bulk colours or in between green or brown just like we did earlier. So hopefully you can see why it's so important to make a mark on the table, have a play around with the white in exactly the same position and start to get a feel for where the white goes and where your natural angles are. So as always if you enjoyed the video please give the video a like. You can also now support these videos on Patreon so that will enable me with a little bit more support to devote a bit more time to making these videos because I do all my filming and all my editing myself so with a little bit more support on Patreon I'll be able to upload these videos more regularly. As always if you do enjoy these um, tutorial videos please subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching. Cheers.